It was one, one wintry night, March 22nd, 2002. Robert Jones and his wife, Teresa, were sitting in their house with their two-month-old child, Albert. Now, they were a happy family, but all of a sudden, Robert's twin brother, John, comes in. Now, John and Robert do not have a good history. John and Robert soon got into an argument, and John threatened his two-month-old son, Albert, and his wife, Teresa. He held them at gunpoint, tied them up, all while pointing a gun at his twin brother. What's his name? John. Robert, that's Robert. his name. <laughs> It's a sad story, really, but the story ends with the, the death of Albert Jones and Teresa Jones, and the disappearance of John Jones and Robert Jones. That's all their names, okay? So here, we're, we're, ten, we're here tonight to find out who done it. Little baby Albert. <laughs> Now, this looks like a Dateline interview. The world is an illusion. <laughs> Nothing is real. Having a DIY scene in Fitchburg, I think, is so important because it uh, encourages a lot of local musicians to uh, get themselves out there. And it also provides like a, a really cool form of like do-it-yourself entertainment that um, happens every month or a couple times every month or so. And I think DIY is very important in the music scene. Now, I myself am very involved in uh, the DIY community across uh, Massachusetts. And I think it is, it is crucial to um, keep the scene alive because there's no other way for musicians to get themselves out there than to start off in a DIY um, scene. So preserving Congress is very important to not just the musicians, but also the people who love to go there. I was there over spring break, and it was St. Patty's Day, so you better believe I was, I was working in the produce department, so you better believe I was stocking that cabbage. Oh boy, I had this one guy come in, right? I had this one guy come in um, with an empty cart, and he's like very broken English. I, I could hardly understand him. He was asking me about the cabbage, and like we keep all the discarded leaves in a little box underneath the uh, the end cap where we keep all the cabbage, the cabbage display. So there's this guy asking me if he could take the leaves, like take the box. And I was like, well, you can take the leaves. Like, I guess you could just take them out with you. But like, put them in a bag. Don't take the box. So I figured, oh, I'd take a bag full of leaves and then leave. I left. I came back. Box was completely empty. It was, that was a box full of cabbage leaves, completely empty. So then you'd think, all right. All right. So he's. Make two more stuff. I don't need to not just listen to him ramble. Like, oh no, this is a good story. I got more. I got more. I told him cabbage. He's giving me an interview. He's amazing. Don't make it stop. Uh, that was good. Okay. Let's do the anonymous interview. <laughs> I want to finish my cabbage story first. Okay. Cool. Okay, so anyway, the next day, right? So this guy has a lot of cabbage leaves already. So the next day he comes in, empty carriage again, and still broken English. You can hardly understand what he's saying. He's saying that. His wife said he needs more cabbage. They need more cabbage. So we got a big display full of like, oh, I don't know, maybe 30 to 40 cabbages or so, maybe more than that. We got a pretty big display. So he's saying he wants the leaves again. So I'm saying, all right, well, we got a box full of leaves. So he stuffs the whole thing full of leaves, or the leaves full in the bag, and then he puts them in his cart. And then he says he needs the cabbages. So we got like these giant black bins that we have full of cabbage. And he's saying he wants some of those. So I'm like, all right. And so I pick one up and he's saying, no, help me lift up the bin. So I'm like, okay. So him and I lift up the black bin full of cabbage. Like there's probably 30 cabbages in there. We dump the entire thing into his cart. And then he's still down there picking at the leaves. And he's saying his wife needs more cabbage, need more cabbage. And I don't understand why he needs so much cabbage, but then by the time I'm going on break like an hour later, I see him at the, at the checkout like by the registers and he's got his cabbage just all down the conveyor belt, just cabbage after cabbage after cabbage. And this, this cashier, this poor cashier is ringing him up and just so confused why he has so many cabbages. So I walk by, I think, not my problem. I go on break and then I forget about it. Is that the end of it? That's the end of the story. Why did he need all the cabbage though? I don't know, but. <laughs> His wife said he needed more cabbage, so he went and he got more cabbage. Oh man, when I was younger, I had this blanket who, that I absolutely adored, right? 
and it had little pictures of it was like a quilt type of thing it had little pictures of bears and um, building blocks and whatever other sorts of things on there and I treasured that blanket and I had that up until I was about maybe eight or nine or so and I just disappeared from my life and um, after it disappeared I didn't know what to do with myself but while I was suffering at that time I feel like at the same time it helped me um, become stronger as the person that I am today because in life you have to deal with loss um, you have to deal with loved ones um, you losing loved ones and losing some of the material possessions that you love so I think losing that blanket at such a young age was actually good for for my uh, stability and for my, my mental strength because I learned how to deal with loss at an early age even if it was something as insignificant as a blanket I still learned how to deal with that loss when I was a young young man a young boy flowers oh man I got nothing <laughs> flowers are I don't know they're okay bees pollinate them and stuff that's pretty cool I'm not allergic to bees. I've only been stung by a bee once in my life. And you know, my friend Zach, right? So we were all at my friend Zach's house once. We were all very young, maybe fourth or fifth grade or so. I don't exactly know how old. Um, but we were all at his house and we were joking like, oh, or not joking, but we were saying, oh, I've only been stung by a bee once or I've never been stung by a bee. So my friend Zach is proclaiming to everyone, I've never been stung by a bee. And he's just all like, look at me. I've never been stung by a bee. So then we go outside to, you know, play, run around, do whatever we do. What does he do? He gets stung by a bee. Right there. He starts bawling his eyes out. Mom runs outside, takes him inside. He was procl proclaiming, just like boasting, just not 30 minutes ago, I have never been stung by a bee. And then, boom, right there, he gets stung by a bee. First time in his life. And I don't think he's ever been stung since. And neither have I. I tend to avoid that. Whenever I see a bee, you see a bee, be a tree. That's what they say. You gotta be very still when you see a bee, so it won't sting you. And I don't really know how painful it is, because it's been a while since I've been stung, but I'm sure if a bee were to sting me, it wouldn't be that like traumatic. I'm sure I'd be able to deal with it fine. But it's one of those things where it's like very small and fast, so it sort of scares you. It, it makes you jump, because it's like, man, this is a weird little creature that's trying to injure me, trying to kill me. So. Um, Bees are quite something, but at the same time, we need to save the bees because the bees are surprisingly becoming somewhat endangered. Um, well, not someone, they are. The bumblebee is becoming quite endangered, and uh, we need to preserve the bee in order to pollinate our flowers because that's a very important part of the, uh, the life cycle process of, of all plant life. So if we don't do that, then I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm sure it won't be good. Our environment is going to die. And that's what I have to say about that. What would you do? I know one bee is kind of okay, but what if it was like multiple bees? Multiple, I'd run for my life. If, it, if there were multiple you bees... Would be a tree? Wait, can you come no. Up no, yeah, if there were multiple bees, like a swarm even, like if there was a nest, like if there was like a, a hive and I pissed that hive yeah, off... See, now I wore this wristwatch when I was younger. Um, it was probably like a McDonald's or a Burger King toy. It was like this cheap plastic one, and it was actually the Simpsons themed. Hey, Johnny, how yeah. do you feel about all these strange bright objects moving around you? Is it a supernatural experience for you? Well, it's kind of, uh, all these strange lights around me are kind of bringing me back to that time where, um, I don't want to talk about that. But anyway, it, it sort of reminds me of a time in my past where I was um, taken, I guess you could say, by, uh, I don't want to say aliens, but another species, maybe, or a foreign uh, life forms, uh, if that's how you want to put it. So basically, aliens. Um, are you sure they were aliens? How, did, how do you know? Well, see, I don't know for sure. That's why I didn't want to say they were aliens. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when you got these, these gray little fingers with little suction cups at the end and you got this, these noises that you can't even really hear. They're just extreme frequencies. So you can hardly um, 
even comprehend them, but just barely enough so you know they're communicating. Um, when you got all that around you and these just weird gray slugs, you know, like, I don't think this is human anymore. I don't think we're interacting with, um, with any species you can find on Earth. So that, that was my first clue. Um, but as soon as they took me into their, um, into their lab, it was like a lab with um, sort of a red, um, more infrared light. <clears throat> and I was sitting in this lab in this weird, it, w it was like their version of a chair, but it was just like a, it was a, f it was a flat sheet of some sort of uh, metallic kind of uh, thing. It was like a mixture of a classic like metal chair, but concrete also, like it was sort of grainy like concrete. And um, so it was flat, but then in the very middle it had like a point upward. And I guess that's just the natural way their backs um, sort of arc. But uh, for me it was very uncomfortable. They couldn't seem to comprehend why I couldn't really fit on this weird chair thing. So they put me on that chair and um, they poked around at me a bit. And um, I don't remember a whole lot after that, just bits and pieces. But basically the next morning I woke up in the middle of a uh, cornfield. and. Um, in the middle of this, this weird design that they must have made with their, with their ship. That's all I can really say about that, though. It was, um, it was a weird time for me. Boy, I love talking about haircuts. So the last time I got a haircut was, um, it was about two weeks ago now, because it was the Friday or the Saturday I got home for spring break. And we have this, this small little place in downtown Maynard, Mass, called Porfino's, uh, Porfino's Hair. And they give absolutely incredible haircuts. And surprisingly, um, their staff is made up of ex-convicts, which is kind of like scary. But at the same time, it's, they do a really good job. Um, and what they do is they're professionals. And all like the modern hairstyles you see on like the, the hip youth these days, they're given those haircuts. So I say, like, give me a two on the sides, uh, taper the back, and trim like a half an inch off the top. And they know exactly what I'm saying. So they take the, the two razor, the size two, and then they, they shave off the sides and then they taper the back, which means like it starts off kind of fuller and then it slowly tapers off. Um, and then the, the top I like to keep long. And that's their whole, like, that's what they mainly do is the hip young style is what they call an undercut, where the top is kind of longer than the sides and the back. So that's, I've started to do that because I think it looks nice and I don't do it to quite the extent that some other people do, but I do like the sort of uh, flow it gives my hair. And um, so my hair is kind of curly up here. If it gets too long, it sort of curls that way. Uh, but right now, it's just that perfect length where it's not really curling this way, but it's sort of just swooping over my head. Um, before I got my hair cut, my hair at the top was long enough to like go down to the bridge of my nose or the bottom of my nose. But um, I got my hair cut a couple weeks ago, so it's, it's not quite that long anymore. And, it does like swoop off like this a lot when it's longer, but right now it's not too long. But Porfino's, they give excellent haircuts and I always wait to get a haircut until I go home. I always wait because I, I couldn't go anywhere here and be satisfied. All right, all right, kill that and... <coughs> oh. Hey, Joe. Hey, <laughs> I'm well. They smoking. Oh hey my Johnny. God. Hey June. Oh, oh wow. shit! What? Look at the uh, Oh yeah, Holy yeah. Shit. All right, think of a song and okay. then just say every word of the song in like this super serious voice. I have a perfect song for this. Have you guys ever heard of the uh, the hip '90s boy band Together? It's a two, not not T O. No. Together. So. Um, it's a little too hip for me. They're incredible, and I'm gonna recite two. some of their lyrics. <clears throat> this song. Are you guys shooting? This song is called Five Gather by Two Gather. And that's a five and then a two, like the actual numbers, not spelled out. It's two gather, whoa. Oh, it's two gather, whoa. And keep in mind, all these two gathers are twos still, not T O. Number T, uh, two, G E T H E R, like R, spelled out R. To the C D you play in your car, drive to, cry to, blow that star. Tiger Woods is 10 strokes under par. So tell me how far you could get at the superstar sideshow that ain't it. Don't throw no fit. Just ride to the energy. It's together from now until infinity. 
Chorus is the chorus part. We are five, we are five, together, together. We do our thing, 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 baby and sing. Five together, we are five, together, we do our thing, 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 baby and sing. See all the girls with their hands in the air? You can tell by the screams, this ain't Lilith Fair. We in a world now, two G's dragon lair. And we'll take off our shirts if you double dog dare. Splitting my pants as I sit in the chair. Revenge of the nerds, funny Hollywood square. Tripping, skipping, toe below who, choo choos coming through, fast on the train track. Now here's the chorus again. Five is one, five is one, five is one, oh. I think the chorus came before that, then this part, and now this, this next part. Yeah, yeah, rub-a-dub-dub, sweet love in the tub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do that part seriously, holy shit. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah, rub a dub dub, sweet love in the tub. We're here to hug, kiss and give you back rubs if, you, if you're into that. Had to scratch our way up from down in the mud. We weren't discovered in no Mickey Mouse Club. Playing our dub, looking for a deal. We're two for real with five on the bill, five on the court championship. You can't eat one of these potato chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the flavor hits as it bumps your hips. Through the eye of an eagle, we need no playa hating people. Sequel, equal to none. Together, masterpiece, job's done. If there's gonna be five of us, why not call us five together? Chorus times two. This is a new math, fool. We're two to the G, breaks all the rules. And one times five is two times five, the noise coming back to you. This is a new math, fools. We're two to the G. Breaks all the rules, and one times five is two times five, the noise coming back to you. Four plus one, oh, four plus one, four plus one, oh, chorus, the end. Thank you. How much acid was the writer of that song on? I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> you have to forget how fun. audition works. They are a 90s boy band, keep in mind. That song is incredible. If I had a guitar, I'd play Wagon Wheel. Oh, oh, that looks cool. It's 11.42. We got about 30 minutes. Woo! Yeah, it looks cool. So, Johnny, what's your earliest memory? <laughs> All right. I have, I, I have an answer for this. So, I don't exactly know how old I was, but I want to say I was maybe three, four, or five or so. And so I had, it was my first nightmare as well. And this is also my first memory. So I had this memory that, uh, or this nightmare, that my mother and I were in France and we were dressed up in this very like sort of pilgrim-esque um, outfits, like the black with the, the buckles and the hats. You know what I'm saying. Um, so we were in Paris and then there was like a, a sewer, right? Like a sewer grate sort of right there like one of the manhole covers, and it was open. And so I looked in there, and there was nothing in there. And then I looked back, like, up again. My mom was gone, and I was kind of scared. And then I looked back inside of the manhole slash sewer, and inside was a fish at the very bottom, and he was flopping around, and he was kind of big. It was like a trout or something. And he was kind of big, he was flopping around, and he looked angry, and I got really, I got horrified, I got really scared. And so I didn't know what to do, and then Boom, it was over, I woke up, and that was the end of that. What was your most memorable time in high school? Best memory of high school. Okay, <clears throat> so I wouldn't say, I don't, I don't know if this is the most memorable time, but it certainly is one that I just sort of thought of. So one of my most memorable times in high school was um, every year around March or so, the high school, we have a dodgeball tournament. <clears throat> and. Um, us kids with that, I was one of the kids that was up at WAVM all, all the time, the radio and TV station. I was up there all day, every day. So none of us are very good at sports. So we thought, as a joke, let's make a, a dodgeball team and just sort of go in there and just have fun. So we formed a team of five of us, I believe, and we wanted to call ourselves Dodge Wilkes Booth. Um, that didn't really work out, so we, they wouldn't let us because it couldn't be someone who was dead. 
So we called ourselves the Magic Bullet. And um, basically, we all dressed up in, um, and so the band, we were in the band also, and they gave us tuxes. So we all dressed up in our band tuxes. They were like, all right tuxes. They were very formal, formal gear. Um, so we all dressed up in our tuxes. And we had our one friend, Zach, he was, he's a very small guy. So we had him as like the president. So he wore like a coat and we just wore the, like, the shirts and he was more important. So we all surrounded him like we were Secret Service and we all had sunglasses on. So we surrounded Zach, this tiny little guy, and we walked out onto the court, um, just forming a line around him. And then we all dispersed and he was in the middle and we were all to the side of him. And then we faced off against these try hard like guys who were super into sports. So we lost, of course, but um, as soon as the game started, we all ran for the balls or whatever, and then Zach got pelted immediately. And so it's kind of funny because the point of it was we were protecting Zach. We were the Secret Service, but he got knocked out like immediately. And I was actually the last one to be knocked out, and uh, I threw it, and I think I got someone out, but. It didn't take long before I was knocked out as well. So we, we lost ultimately, but it was still a good time. Are you more of a hunter or a gatherer? Am I more of a hunter or a gatherer? Let's see. Well, I definitely like to hunt what I want, but I'm not a very assertive person. So I guess I'm more of a gatherer who likes to hunt. I like gather the things that I hunt together, but I don't hunt a lot. So I gather a few things that I hunt. So I'm a, a, a hatherer. I'm a hatherer. Okay. Yeah. If you were on an island and you could only bring three things, what would you bring? Uh, if I were to bring three things on an island and only three things, it would have to be my, uh, my Mamma Mia. Um, Your DVD of the movie? Totino the Pizza Boy <laughs> and um, Totino's Pizza Rolls because I put them in my mouth five times a day. <sighs> this is a very difficult question. There are so many good albums out there. <clears throat> hmm. I'd bring Shaney Baby with me. That's what I would bring. Uh, Desert Island just did the BBC show. That's why I said that. Mm. Watch that video, though, and listen to the music that they use in the universe Tim and Eric sketch, and they use some pretty cool music for that. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Of course I believe in Bigfoot. Uh, I'm looking at him right now. He got big feet. You know what I'm uh, saying? You know what they say he got about big, big feet. feet. Big socks. You know what they say about big socks, big shoes. I was just gonna say big feet. You know what they say about big shoes. Big feet. Big feet. Everyone is a big foot. Uh, Everyone has a big foot inside of them. Yep. What's next? Wait, how did he get there? Uh, <laughs> how many square feet of pizza are eaten in the U.S. each year? <laughs> I don't know the answer to this. Give me a second. Um. <laughs> Wait, do you want a calculator? No, I can do it in my head. It's fine. What are you basing it off of? Personal experience. 526,783.5 square feet of pizza are eaten in the U.S. every year. Google it. Well, you, gotta, you gotta find out how close you are. Wait, what was your number? It's like 525,000. So you don't even remember, you so phony. He didn't Somewhere save his work. Yeah. Square feet of pizza. Pizza. Pizza pie. Let's play a, a free association word game. Wait, do you do impressions? No. <laughs> try to do impressions. Do a skater boy like you did in that one video. We'll just give you, and you, like, hey, immediately try, like, if I say Morgan oh, no. Freeman, you just do, like, Oh, three, God. Like, this Hello, is the effort. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's not giving me the answer. Hey. If you, if you were 80 years old, what would you tell your children? Uh, they are all going to be dead. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> excuse us. Get out! Be quiet. I'm angry. I'm very angry. We should probably start the breakdown now. Be angry. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Grr, baby. He did say he wants to watch some of these, so. <laughs> I'd like to have a fun time.
How does yeah. the internet work? So the internet is a series of tubes, you see. And so every computer has, has these tubes. They're, it's like if you've ever seen a hamster, a hamster enclosure, it's sort of like the tubes that hamsters run through. And so they're sort of clear, plasticky, and colored. Um, they have cool different colors. You can spend more money for different colors. So basically, these tubes are attached to the back of your computer monitor. And um, it, it goes through the wall, right? And then it goes to the internet company. And what they do is they, they have like a mill of internet liquid. And then they, they pump the internet liquid into your tubes. And then they go right into your computer. And then boom, the electrical currents um, of the internet are put into those tubes into your computer. And then boom, you got the internet. It's email, email, baby. Email. Right. Johnny, do you think you have a stock? Uh, yeah, I am actually very involved in stocks. Um, <laughs> I have, I have a lot of shares in uh, the Apple Corporation. Um, this is the new Apple smartphone, the iPhone 6s. That's right. And um, <laughs> Gur, baby.